Is the narcissist building a case against me? There are many different instances where your involvement with the narcissist could result in potential legal action. For instance, a common one is divorce or a dispute with regard to arrangements concerning the children. It might be about the return or repayment of money, equipment, some kind of breach of contract. It might be defamation proceedings. And therefore, it is not uncommon for a victim to ask, is the narcissist doing these things in order to build a case against me, to make life difficult for me, to create the impression that I am the one that is in the wrong? Are all of these steps being taken now with a view to creating a case, either in relation to one that's ongoing or with a view to bringing one? It is a fair and repeated question. The answer to the question of whether the narcissist is building a case against me depends upon the type of narcissist that you are dealing with. If you have the misfortune to be involved with the extremely rare greater or ultra, the short answer is yes, the narcissist is building a case against you with regard to the actions that are being taken where there is an ongoing dispute between you and the narcissist. For example, let us say that I have a commercial dispute with one of my business rivals. Given the way that my narcissism operates with regard to the need to assert control in the moment, but also because I look ahead with regard to collateral consequences, how I can manage them, how I can cause them, and further outcomes that I want to achieve, I am able to do this as a consequence of the way that my narcissism is involved, allied with my cognitive function, since it is such an extremely high level, alongside my access to specific resources, money, people, networks, know-how, and so forth. Accordingly, I know that a dispute is ongoing or is about to blow up involving a commercial rival. I want to take their legs from beneath them. Therefore, in order to plan how... Uh, in order to plan to succeed with this, to um, nobble them in some way, to cripple their business activity, or at the bare minimum to win a legal case involving them, there are a number of steps that I might take. I might bribe certain individuals to provide evidence which is supportive to my position and contrary to the other. It might be that I threaten individuals by obtaining information about them so that I know that they have something to hide, and that there is an implicit understanding, done of course not directly by me but through a third party, that there will be a consequence if they don't do as they are asked to do. And that leverage is utilised. Uh, leverage will be maintained either in a positive way, you'll stand to gain this if you do it, or through loss. If you don't, these are the consequences that will occur. It might also be the case that I decide to instruct a number of law firms and barristers to advise on small sections of the contract between m me or my organisation and the relevant rival. That means that when the dispute flares up and my rival seeks the assistance of the top law firms and top barristers, they're already conflicted and they can't use them, meaning that they will have to use somebody down the food chain. In certain areas of dispute, there are only a very small number of absolute top-notch lawyers and barristers, and therefore it's advantageous to take them out of the gain by getting them to advise upon part of the contract at an early juncture, and thus they are conflicted. And there are a whole range of other manipula manipulations that are planned and calculated that I could utilise to ensure that my business rival is in difficulty. I could obtain a favourable expert to my cause. I could plant evidence that demonstrates that they've caused the problem, that their product, for instance, doesn't work, or their services were skewed, or whatever it is that I wish to do to ensure that their position is detrimental. The creation of adverse publicity by getting puff pieces organised within certain trade journals and newspapers, and so on and so forth. All of this is planned and orchestrated, but this can only be done by a narcissist that utilises uh, forward planning to such an extent, allied with the access to a high level of cognitive function 
and considerable resource. I do indeed build that case, and that could be utilised in the same way if I was involved in, let us say, a divorce that I would plan ahead, knowing that I was, if I were married, that I was going to divorce this individual, that I would ensure that certain assets were put beyond their reach, that they wouldn't know about them, that certain trails that might lead somewhere would then go to a dead end. And I ring fence all financial matters to ensure the most successful outcome for me when it came to the division of assets. Graters, of course, would behave in a similar way. Fortunately for all of you, Graters and the Ultra are extremely rare, and therefore you are more likely to come across the lesser or mid-range narcissist. Are they taking steps to build a case against you? It might seem like they are. Take for instance, and this is a common example, what is going on where you are in a co-parenting situation with the narcissist, and the narcissist keeps sending zingers your way, appertaining to your capability to look after the child properly. You drop off your child, and the narcissist sends a text saying, you forgot to include her swimming gear. There was no need to include it, because she's not going swimming. Or the swimming was cancelled. But, as a consequence of this text, on the face of it, it makes it look like you have forgotten to do something in respect of your child. Then the narcissist sends another text on another occasion. You forgot to include her packed lunch. It may well be that the narcissist has thrown it away and accused you of not providing one, even though you know that you did. It might be that the narcissist suggests that the child has turned up in dirty clothes or in need of a haircut. Or it might be that they've got certain bruising on their arm, which requires further investigation. And this happens on a number of occasions. You, as the victim of this particular narcissist, could well be understood for thinking they are trying to create an impression that I am a poor parent, a readiness for the ongoing court case. We have a hearing in a few months' time. They are going to present all of this as evidence that I am unsuitable, unfit to parent the child, to stymie my custody application, my residence application. You would be forgiven for thinking as such. What it is important for you to understand that the lesser and mid-range narcissist isn't planning to do that because their narcissism does not operate in that way. Here is what is happening. When the child is dropped off and is with the narcissist parent, that child causes you to come up on the radar. The narcissism in the unconscious asks this question. Is the non-narcissist parent under control? The answer, because you're painted black, will invariably be no. Therefore, the narcissism, obeying the first law of narcissism, says, well, all appliances must be brought under control and kept under control at all times. Therefore, we now need to take steps to assert control over the non-narcissist parent. Invariably, particularly if you have not accessed my How to Co-Parent a Narcissist Assistance Package, you'll have left too many doors open, meaning that a direct hoover can take place. And therefore, the narcissist can send you a message or ring you up, send you an email, etc. And will make a comment along the lines of, you forgot to include Amy's packed lunch. This, of course, is a lie. And it is through the narcissistic perspective that he believes that you failed to do this, he says as such, and your reaction provides him with fuel and enables the knowledge that control has been asserted over you. His allegation is specific in that moment to assert control over you in that moment. On the next occasion, same applies. Child arrives, you are linked to that child, you come up on the radar, the narcissism asks, are you under control? The answer is no. And therefore, there is a direct hoover against you, and this time the narcissism selects the suggestion that the child arrived wearing a dirty dress. These are all separate and distinct instances of asserting control over you. The narcissist's narcissism isn't thinking, I know, let's keep doing this because it will provide us with some evidence that can be used against the, narciss used against the non-narcissist parent in court. Not at all. Remember, 
Narcissism operates, especially wherein it is the case appertaining to less from mid-range, to control in the moment. Not yesterday, not two weeks in the future, but now. And in the next second, now. And in the next second, now. And in these instances, each time that you come upon the radar, the narcissism dictates that you can be hoovered directly with some comment, triangulation, appertaining to the child. And you, of course, not understanding narcissism, knowing that you're dealing with a despicable narcissist, and of course driven by emotional thinking, understandably but incorrectly think, this is being done on purpose to create the impression that I am a bad parent for use in the court case. No, it's being used to provoke you in that moment so that you react with a provision of fuel and give control to the narcissist. However, what can then happen is when it gets to the court hearing, the existence of your application to get full custody of the child naturally threatens the narcissist's control. The narcissism must respond to that by asserting control. And what it does is it basically looks in its box of tricks and thinks, in the unconscious, remember, of the lesser or mid-range narcissist's mind, how can we assert control over this individual because their application is threatening our narcissist's control? Ah, let's bring up the past, but let's bring up the past from 10 different occasions and create this idea that she's a poor parent by referencing the text messages about the stained dress, the text messages about the forgotten packed lunch, the text messages about the forgotten swimming costume, and so on and so forth. The narcissist did not send those texts to create an imp overall impression. They were in the instant. However, when, it ar when you arrive at that future instant, which ne is now the present, the narcissism realizes that it can use past events five, six, ten different past events, collect them and present them in a particular way. Remember, a narcissist will bring up the past to control the present in the same way that a narcissist will use the future to control the present, that being known as future faking. So the narcissist isn't actually building a case consciously against you. Those hoovers of a malign nature where you're being triangulated with complaints about how you are treating the child or caring for them are all being done to insert, assert control in the moment. It just so happens, however, that the existence of this evidence, irrespective of whether it's false or not, and invariably it is false, allows the narcissist to gather all of that up at a future point, which then becomes the now, and uses the past against you. What must you do about this? Where you are faced with such an accusation, remember, you are not going to be able to persuade the narcissist that you're right and he is wrong, because that will be a further challenge to his control, and his narcissism won't allow it. What you must do is state your case once, so that you create evidence that you did do the thing. Even if you can't actually prove it, it's important for you to record the fact that I did provide the packed lunch because I remember I created ham and cheese sandwiches and also included a yogurt because I provided her with a raspberry one as that's her favourite. And that is beneficial. In certain instances as well, you may also take the precautionary step of taking a photograph of the child before they go to show that they're clean and well presented, to take a picture of the fact that their homework has been done or that the relevant books are in their bag. It doesn't take too long to achieve that. You can take pictures, for instance, the fact that they have the relevant slip that has to be handed in at school, that they have their packed lunch, that they have the relevant sports kit, etc., etc. The narcissist will still allege that you've done something wrong, but then you have independent evidence that could be demonstrated to a court at a later juncture if the narcissist takes the step of bringing up the past. If you are not able to get the photographic evidence, at least state your position so there is a record. Remember, don't fall into the trap of trying to argue with the narcissist by saying, look, here's some evidence, you're wrong, I'm right. They won't accept it. They will shift the argument onto something else or they'll just ignore you. The point is, you're doing this not to persuade the narcissist that you're right. You're doing it to create an evidential record to avoid the past being brought up against you in the future. Accordingly, when it comes to 
ongoing disputes or potential disputes between you and the narcissist. If you're dealing with the greater or the ultra, that narcissist is specifically plotting and planning and taking calculated steps to build a case against you and will be using manipulations throughout a period of time to achieve a future outcome. Lesser and mid-range narcissists are not doing that. Their behaviours are all in the instant. However, there is the possibility that when they get to the court hearing or shortly beforehand, their narcissism will cause them to use the past and bring it back up for the purposes of asserting control in the now. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.